So what are those things that you can do today? Even if you're at home, even if your kids are there and it's chaotic, even if you can't go outside, even if you name the circumstance, what can you do? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ah, This is episode 169 of the Sales Wolves podcast, and this episode is titled Surviving or Thriving. As I say that title, The initial idea of this episode was talking about the difference between being a victim and a survivor. But really, as I unpack that, I think there's still a negative connotation in the word surviving or survivor. And what we all ultimately really want to do is is thrive. In no better time than right now, as we're starting to slowly come out of this COVID crisis across the world and certainly across certain states in the U S and things are beginning to open. Things are, people are beginning to get back outside and around other people is really taking a look at yourself and the way that you handled this crisis, all this chaos, there could be job layoffs, furloughs, businesses that were devastated, uh, health crisis, uh, you, one of your family members, But will you look back at this period of time and will you say that you survived COVID-19, you survived this chaos, you survived this crisis, or will you be able to look back and say that you thrived in this chaos? Because what I know about every situation, every struggle, every obstacle is there's a lesson to be learned in it, that there's purpose in it. And that's largely up to you on whether or not you are a person that sees that struggle as a potential lesson, sees that struggle as a potential area to grow in, grow through. Or if you're someone that does take that victim mentality and just looks at it as, oh, these things are happening to me. Oh, this crisis happened. This virus got laid off. I'm just a victim. There's nothing I can do. Well, the reality is, no. regardless of how bad the situation is, there's always things you can do. There are things you can control. There's plenty of things that you can't. But if you're spending all of your time and all of your energy on those that you can't control, if you're staring at the TV watching a death count rise, what can you control? And so when you look at thriving through chaos... It's about identifying those things that you can control, those things that you can do to move forward and actually doing those things. I know that sounds crazy. Maybe it sounds simple. Maybe it sounds stupid. But in application, it's super easy not to. So what are those things that you can do today, even if you're at home, even if your kids are there and it's chaotic, even if you can't go outside, even if you name the circumstance, what can you do? And then are you doing those things? Because there's a big difference between the awareness of what is possible and actually acting towards what is possible. So those that will come out of this crisis and thrive are the ones that put in the work during the crisis. Billions and billions and billions of dollars will be made post COVID-19. The 12 months prior, there will be billions of dollars made. But I can promise you that money's not going to go to anyone that just sits on their hands and does nothing during. So what can you do today? What can you do this week? What goals can you set? And what activity-based goals can you set? Because quite frankly, if you're in sales now and you're watching this, you're like, man, I can't sell anything. Or not as many people are buying. Well, great. Not as many people are buying. How many phone calls can you make? Set your goals based on the activities that you know you're supposed to do. 
with an understanding that conversions are down, that close ratios are down, that less people may close in that call doesn't stop you from having the ability to make the call. And so I think if you look at like the previous uh, podcast, two episodes ago, I believe about money making activities versus making money, that those phone calls that used to be money making activities, those phone calls where you used to be able to pick up the phone and someone would answer and they would buy. Maybe it's not that way anymore, but you can still pick up the phone and talk to that person and can create the opportunity for you to make money down the road when we get out of this. Some of those things that you had to do in person that you had to meet with somebody face to face before you can still meet with them virtually. And maybe it does create a barrier and it does create a lower conversion because of that personal nature, not being there face to face, but you can still do it. And by doing so, you'll be able to make money after this is over. But the reality is we're, we're entering into a, into a new normal. I don't think that there's anyone out there that's confused that, you know, flip the light switch on crisis over everything is just going to go completely back to normal. There will be new things, new oper new, new modes of operation, new ways of connection and interaction, new ways that businesses are reaching their clients, customers, members, and so you can be on the front end of that and you can be a part of that wave, that avalanche, or you can sit back and just watch it happen. And that's really my encouragement in this is no matter how you have treated the last eight weeks, whether you have played the victim, whether you have isolated, cut off communication and just completely done nothing, you can start today. It's never too late. It's never too late to go back to the drawing board, go back to the basics, figure out, okay, here's the limitations of what I can do right now, but here's what I can do right now. And then go do those things. Every single piece of effort put in today will bear massive fruit tomorrow. And by tomorrow, I don't mean the day after today. I mean, when this crisis is over and when things start opening back up. And then one of the biggest things that you can do is just be in constant contact with people. Like you can use your phone during this crisis. You can talk to people, whether they're prospective clients or whether they're existing clients, whether they're people that work with you, whether they're just friends and family, you can use this time to build relationships. Again, that is not a money making activity, but it is an activity that will make you money later. And lastly, you know, I, I'm so focused on this idea that that progress is really the catalyst for success and happiness, that it's all about progress and progress today may very may look very different than progress five months ago. But progress is still progress. Any progress is still progress. Slow progress is still progress. A little bit of progress is still progress. And if you're not doing it for you. Do it for your family. Your spouse wants to see you in the midst of progress. Your kids need to see you experiencing progress. Your friends and family need to see you experiencing progress because when you do, they will. When you are doing the things that you can do and staying active and getting stuff done and time blocking your schedule to be able to spend time with your family, but also spend time doing those things that you can do to push the ball forward. It'll give them the courage to go out and do the same thing. And that's what everybody needs. So are you going to be a victim? Are you going to survive this crisis or will you thrive through this? and grow through this process, become a better version of yourself when we come out of this, a more equipped person, a more compassionate person, a more loving person, a more driven person, so that the next few months after this crisis is over, you can not only make up for everything you lost, but you can push forward way ahead of the goal that you had first in place. That is today's episode, 169 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris. 
and I am a sales wolf. Ow!